Welcome to LA55 Customs. Today I'm going to show you how to change a water pump on a 2008 Land Rover LR2. All right, before we get underway, um, I'm just telling you this is a transverse motor. So the motor actually sits sideways or horizontal in your engine bay. And your transmission will be back here. The power steering pump and your water pump are going to be located right down in this area. Now, the reason I said power steering pump is because here's a brand new power steering pump, which I'll replace that and I'll do a video on that also. But here's your power steering pump. Now, if you see these two holes right here, this one and this one, those two holes is what drives your water pump. So then if you notice on the front side of your water pump, there's one hole here and one hole here. So what it's gonna do is those two are gonna line right up. There's one there and it will line right up and pop into place just like that. And so there it is. So that is how your water pump actually turns um, inside your mo motor where it circulates your water. It's driven off your power steering pump. So I'm gonna show you how to take this off, how to replace this. So let's get underway. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the engine cowling. So go ahead and just take and lift up on it and you'll pop it off. Well, let's go ahead and set that off to the side. Next, we're gonna remove your air box. This is where your air cleaner sits. So what you're gonna do is, this is a circlip that sits here. And what you're gonna do is pinch these two together and then pull this whole thing back. The other thing too is you have a mass airflow sensor. So what you have to do is push in on the base of it like this, pull on it, there you go. And that's your mass airflow sensor connector. So once you remove this, pull this back, this whole thing will just lift straight out. The next thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and disconnect the uh, positive battery terminal and the negative battery terminal. And then we're gonna go ahead and take and lift out the battery. And also we're gonna take the battery box out also. There's three screws that are holding it down. Go ahead and take that out, remove this. Then you get full access to the back of the engine. Okay, so now that you've removed everything, we've got everything out of the way, you have full access to the back side of your motor. Now here is your brake vacuum pump, your air conditioning compressor, and your power steering pump. Under your power steering pump is your water pump. So I'm showing you this because if you ever have a failure going on with one or the other, um, you know where they're located. Right now, since we're gonna take this off anyways, is a great time to remove and replace your serpentine belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. I bought a Deco uh, serpentine belt to replace it with because it's not an easy job to replace it, but you're already there. So you might as well take the three bolts off of here that, um, and there's one here, one there, and one there. Remove that because you're taking this off anyways to get to the water pump and to get to the um, power steering pump. So let's go ahead and replace that also. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do, uh, we're gonna remove the uh, serpentine belt. Uh, take just a standard crescent wrench, open up the jaws, and right down below here, if you uh, see where my finger's uh, at, the, um, this is your belt tensioner. So this is what is adding the tension to your serpentine belt. So if you take your crescent wrench, you can take and slide it over top of the jaws, right down here, over the top of the jaws, and then just push down, and then uh, you can remove your uh, serpentine belt. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and disconnect. You have three bolts right here. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect those bolts. They're 10 millimeter. Uh, take them out. There's two that are going to be long and one in the back that's short. 
And then there's two connectors that are actually holding, uh, it's the electrical connection. And so you do need to uh, disconnect those. And then you can take this whole unit and just set it off um, on top of the engine. Okay, so now we uh, disconnected our, uh, our lines uh, to the back of our AC compressor. Um, but you know what I always like to do is I like to take the bolts and put them back in where they came out of. Because that way then you don't lose them, they don't get misplaced. Um, I've seen people put uh, bolts back in and they have the wrong size or they end up with extras. Uh, really good practice to get into. You can put all three of these back. Uh, the other thing too is um, if you feel that uh, it's too hard to remember everything that you're going to put back together, uh, take pictures before you start to remove items because then it takes the guesswork out of where a certain line will be ran. Um, it's just, uh, uh, I do that. Uh, it helps out a, a tremendous amount. And, uh, you know, that way you can get it back to the original state. So then um, go ahead and take your air conditioning compressor and move it on top of your motor. Put a rag down so it doesn't damage any wires or anything. And the other thing, too, is the hoses from your AC compressor, uh, they actually run through this. Uh, it's a little locking mechanism. Um, just unhook it and then take that off and then it, uh, it'll go right out of the way. Okay, now this gives us a little bit better view. Um, here is the belt tensioner that I was talking about. So you're just gonna get on there with a crescent wrench right up here on the front and you're gonna push directly straight down. Um, that releases the tension on the serpentine belt. And see, look how the serpentine belt is. It's all frayed here. Um, this hasn't been changed out in a while. See there, there's cracking on the back here. Um, so yeah, definitely need to be replaced. So we'll go ahead and do that while we're in here. Okay, so another thing that uh, I've noticed that is uh, going bad and it's a good time to just check it is the idler pulley. Uh, there's a little bit of movement if you rock it back and forth. Um, I would definitely replace this. Uh, if it makes any noise, uh, these bearings go bad. And um, here is the replacement that I'm going to use, the uh, Michelin. And this is the number that you're going to need for that uh, idler pulley. And here's what it's going to look like. So that is the new idler pulley. And see these bearings inside of here. Uh, over the years, you know, the, with the belt tension being on it, uh, wear these things down. So it's a good, good time right now since you're there um, to change this out. Okay, to get that off, you're going to have to use a, a Torx head. It's a T40 to get off your idler pulley. So here's the other thing too, which is a really good practice to get into. Match up your parts before you go putting them back on. You know, stick them together. Uh, make sure they're the same uh, diameter. Uh, make sure the inside of the bearing, uh, the race and all that stuff is uh, exactly correct. Because you don't want to put on an incorrect part. Um, make sure that the, you know, the thickness on it is the same. You know, so just match them up and then go ahead and, and install it. Okay, so um, when you're putting this all back together, there's a little plastic washer um, that actually fits down in the side of the race. So you can go ahead and install that, just like so. And what that does is it's basically taking up the gap of this part of the uh, bolt that's going in there. So as you're putting it in, um, then you got your cover that goes on there. And then you take and slide this down in, just like so. And then it locks in place. That way, then it doesn't have any um, wiggle room. So that's exactly how you put it back on. Just go ahead and install it. Uh, put it back with the Torx head uh, T40. Okay, so what we have to do now is we're going to go ahead and remove your power steering pump. Underneath here, this is where your water pump sits. It's directly underneath here. And there's two bolts that sit right here. It's a Torx head. It's a T25. There's one right here. And then if you spin it all the way around, uh, there's one on this side also. So you got to take both of those uh, bolts out. Um, that actually is hooked onto the uh, water pump itself. Let me show you the water pump right here. And this is what your water pump looks like. And this is where 
the those two bolts go right there and one right there okay so um, once you remove these two bolts here the bolts that actually go in and hold your pulley to the water pump um, once those are removed uh, the, what I'm gonna do is this I'm gonna break free this nut right here on your power steering and then um, there's a bolt on the back side, and then you can swing this out of the way. Uh, make sure you have a rag, uh, you know, present, because it's going to make a little bit of a mess. And then break free this bolt here, break free this one here, and then there's this one here, and then we'll be able to take this whole entire unit and swing it out of the way. Okay, so now that uh, I got that bracket right here out of the way, I can show you there the other bolt. Uh, there's one way down here. There's one right there and one on the opposite side back here that you also have to remove. Those are 10 millimeter. So go ahead and take those two out and this uh, um, power steering pump will pull right out. Okay, so now um, that you've uh, loosened all your bolts, um, there's a bracket that also sits on the back here. Uh, you have to take and loosen up the base of it and just kind of swing it out of the way. Uh, but now it's totally loose, so you can go ahead and pull it out. Uh, you just pull straight out, and then you can lift straight up on it. Now, the other thing I highly recommend doing is, um, I got to use two hands to get that out, is to take like a Ziploc bag, a bigger one, and just go ahead and slide the whole unit into it because it's going to start spilling out um, your uh, power steering fluid. So let me get underway. Another good practice to get into is clean the area um, before you put the parts back on. Uh, it's just a great practice to get into, uh, especially if you're using like a used part that you're putting back on. Clean up the part, clean up the mating surface. Um, and also, if even if it's a brand new part, clean up that mating surface really good and then pop it back on, bolt it back in place. Um, the other thing too is with all that oil that ran down on here, once you heat it up, it is going to get hot. It's going to smell like burning oil inside your car. So clean it up anyways. And, uh, it's just a good practice, uh, to get into. The other thing too, is if you're looking for a transmission number, uh, there is your transmission number right there. So if you have to order your, uh, your transmission parts, um, there's your number for it. So if, Right now would be a great time to take a picture of it, uh, store it away somewhere. Um, that way, if you ever do need another transmission or parts to go in it, uh, you have your uh, transmission number. Okay, so now we're going to move on to removing the water pump itself. And what I recommend doing is uh, you would need to get a catch, something to catch the uh, antifreeze, because when you open that up, it is going to run out. So put some rags down, uh, put a, a oil um, pan down there, something to catch the water from running. Um, and the other thing too is it's a good time to do a, a, a radiator flush. So you could drain your radiator fluid and then uh, just flush your whole entire engine and then put all brand spanking new uh, uh, antifreeze in there. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so break those free. Take all six of them out. Uh, this whole piece right here, this whole thing is just gonna pop right off. Okay, so now here is your old water pump. You got that taken out. And what you wanna do is you wanna go through and you wanna double check everything. Make sure that everything matches up. Your bolt pattern is the same. You know, flip it over. Um, you know, look at the, look at everything to make sure that the same. Make sure that the impeller is turning the right direction as this one is and they are and then uh, you also want to look at just you know that everything lines up uh, once you're done with that and you are satisfied um, with the two um, you can buy these uh, online for you know aftermarket um, 50 to 100 bucks OEM is going to be a lot more expensive so your Land Rover OEM Land Rover um, this is actually a Volvo part out of this one because this is a the Volvo um, engine that's in here, that is your number right there that you're gonna be needing. And then what you'll do is, let's walk over here, 
and that is the spot that you're going to be cleaning. So we need to jump in here, uh, spray it down, clean it up, and then go ahead and uh, fit your new uh, gasket. It's gonna fit right in this little groove right here. So you need to clean that up really good all the way around. Um, you know, don't, don't, you're not gonna hurt it. So go ahead and spray it with some WD-40, clean it up really good, and uh, just inspect the area, uh, make sure there's no uh, metal shavings or debris or anything and then uh, go ahead and install that gasket and then you're ready to put back your water pump. So what's nice about this, uh, the water pump, uh, this actually is an aftermarket one. Uh, this is the number off of it. And uh, uh, you know, I, I prefer to put OEM original equipment from Land Rover on here, but uh, the customer didn't want to go that route. So we went ahead and Put in the aftermarket still a great product um here's the new gasket and there's a little um little tit sticking off of here that i'll show you where that goes and they also give you brand spanking new bolts which is really good because uh, being in the block of the uh, motor for so long it heats up and cools down and heats up and cools down and you know you can see that these have had a lot of wear to it um over the years i mean look at that that's uh that's not loctite so uh yeah it's a really good idea to change these out anyways because the heat you know um these are not put in very very tight at all but uh, again let's double check to make sure they're the right size and the right thread and right pitch and uh it looks like it is uh, you don't want them too long and all that but um no, they got it right, so that's that's great. So let's get underway. Okay, so now after you've uh, cleaned it up down there, there is a, let me see if I can get down in here. Okay, yeah, right there. So right up here at the very top, there's that little uh, notch right there. Well, that's where, that's where this little, let's see if we can see it better here, there. That's where that little uh, uh, tit sticks out. That has to go right here, and then it locks into place. So let's go ahead and install that. We'll get it put in there. Uh, then let's go back and re-inspect it, and then we can go ahead and put the water pump back in. Okay, so now we got the, uh, the rubber seal in there. Uh, your gasket uh, is in place. Uh, don't use uh, RTV sealant um, on here. It is not needed. Uh, just make sure you clean up the area really good and pop it in there. Now, if your your gasket uh, keeps falling out um, or it's, you know, walking on you or whatever, uh, you can use a little bit of RTV, stick it into the groove, then insert your, um, your gasket and then put on your water pump. But you do not need to put RTV sealant on there at all. Okay, so now that we're gonna go install the water pump, this is actually the way the water pump is going to sit, just like that, right there. Uh, the other thing too that I wanted to point out is, uh, go ahead and put your bolts in, and then just bring them up with your fingers, and then why, when you're tightening them down, uh, walk from one side to the other side, from here to there, from there to there. And the reason why, it makes it lay flat. It doesn't, you don't get it to walk on you. You don't have like a gap or anything. It'll be just pushed down straight. And then, you know, get them good and good and tight. Don't reef on them because you can strip this out. It is uh, um, easy to do that. So just take it and get them snug and then give it a little bit extra. And that's about it. Or you can look up the torque specifications for it. Um, I normally do that, but on this, um, I've done these so many times that, uh, uh, I got a good feeling for, um, you know, the tension that needs to be put on the uh, bolts. All right, so we we're just about ready to install the power steering pump onto the, um, the connector for your water pump. Here's the easiest way that I found is they, they comes with your little rubber band. If you don't have one, stick it on there. Uh, this thing walks on you. Um, on the aftermarket one, the OEM ones kind of lock in place. This little plastic piece here, let me show you. This piece here uh, is locked into place. So on these, they're solid. 
um, but since the customer didn't want to go with an OEM product, uh, we just went ahead and uh, used a rubber band to hold that in place. It actually comes with it. Um, it holds it in place so it doesn't move on you, but remember to take it off before you bolt everything up. Here's the other thing too that you have to do or you're gonna be taking this pump back off is put on your serpentine belt. And at this time, like I said, get a new one. Um, but anyways, uh, put on your serpentine belt or you'll not be able to get it on after you install it all. So very critical to get your serpentine belt in place. Now we can go ahead and move it forward and lock it in. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, uh, now that you got this, uh, the serpentine belt in, go ahead and uh, put in your lower bolts, this one on this side, and there's the other one on the other side. Go ahead and cinch those down, and then go ahead and uh, cinch down your, uh, your bracket uh, on your top and the bottom. Okay, so if you're choosing to uh, replace your entire serpentine belt and you want to get this out of here, um, you do have to take off your belt tensioner. Um, this is the, uh, the actual belt tensioner itself. So this is your bolt here. It is a 10 millimeter. And so you're going to have to take that off. And then once you take this one bolt off, the whole um, pulley will come off. That way you can also inspect it and see if you actually need a new one. Because if it's loose, uh, if it's making noise, I would replace it. Um, it's a good time to do it right now. That way, everything back here will be new. Um, it's not an easy job to replace, you know, the uh, serpentine belt like it is in other vehicles. So go ahead, remove that, inspect it. If it looks good, then go ahead and run your new belt through and then um, reinstall that. All right, so here's your belt tensioner after you get it out. Uh, there's a little notch that comes out here that fits back in. You'll feel it lock in. And then uh, when you put it back in and then you uh, put your bolt in. But what you want to do is you want to feel, because there's a bearing. And if you feel that and listen to it, I mean, it's starting to walk back and forth. That bearing is starting to go. So I'll ask the customer if he wants to uh, replace this. Um, if not, we'll just go ahead and put it back in. But uh, anyways, it's like I said, it's a great time to um, order these parts and get them in and then replace them uh, while you're there already. So, Okay, so here is your diagram for your serpentine belt. Uh, this is for the rear of the engine. So this is your drive pulley right here. This comes, the shaft comes out of your engine and this is your drive pulley. So this is what actually turns your belt and uh, turns your power steering pump and your AC compressor. So make sure when you put in your belt tensioner that you route that underneath the uh, uh, drive pulley, up over the belt tensioner, down around your power steering pump, uh, under your idler pulley, and then up and over your AC compressor. And that is how it's done. So. You're not going to put in your AC compressor yet. You're going to route everything else correctly. And then once you're ready to install your AC compressor, uh, then you need to uh, pull down on the uh, belt tensioner and, and then lock it in. Okay, one other thing too is um, if you haven't put these in yet, make sure, double check uh, that these uh, bolts are in place. Uh, very crucial. This is what uh, connects to your water pump, it's that black bracket, and just get it good and snug. Don't over tighten it, because if you over tighten it, uh, you can easily uh, break that. It is going into plastic, so just spin it around. And the other thing too is, uh, it's the smaller holes. There's two small holes. All the rest of these holes around here um, are larger holes, so the two smaller holes, slide it in, screw them down. Like I said, get them good and tight not over tight because you can break the plastic so let me show you where it's going into so here's the piece that you're going to go into so again this is going into metal but it's uh, housed by plastic and the thing is if is if you start over tightening this um, i've seen it before where the metal ring actually starts to spin inside the plastic so don't over tighten just get it good and snug and you'll be good to go Okay, so uh, 
now that we've got everything uh, put back together there, we're going to start uh, just finalizing the installation of the bolts. So um, we're going to put in our stabilizer bar here. And uh, when you put them in, when you put your stuff back, squirt it down with WD-40, clean it really quick. It's just a really good habit to get into. Um, yeah, I, I just uh, uh, can't emphasize enough how important it is to clean a part before you put it back on. So go ahead and do that. Um, again, you've got your bolt here, you got your bolt here. Uh, make sure that your two bolts are in the bottom, one on that side, one on that side. And then your, your, um, your brace that comes up the back here, make sure both of these are tight also. And then we're gonna go ahead and install your top, um, your top line for your uh, rack and pinion. Okay, so now that we are going to go ahead and install the, uh, this is your line to the um, rack and pinion steering. Um, the bottom of it has a seal. You just want to inspect that, uh, clean it up, inspect it, make sure that that seal right in the very, very bottom is, uh, is good. It's not damaged by any means. And then you can go ahead and just pop that in place. So it should just line right up. And then as you bring this down, as you bring it down, um, it's going to add pressure to it. And so just go ahead and get it good and snug and then start cranking it down. Uh, don't forget to put the bolt in the back side of this here and uh, so it holds it in place. The other thing too is... Okay, so let's uh, recheck everything really quick. Everything is connected. You got all your bolts in there. There's no bolts left over. Um, your brackets are all bolted down. These two are in, the two bottom bolts. Um, all your lines are hooked up. You got your um, screws in for your water pump. And now we're going to move on to install your AC compressor. Now, when you're doing that, one of the biggest things don't forget to hook up these two lines. Uh, this is your electrical connection. If you do not hook one of the two up or both, you're not gonna have AC inside your vehicle. So make sure you connect those and then um, we'll go ahead and reconnect the serpentine belt. Um, pull it up and kind of get it out of the way so you, know, you have enough room to install your uh, AC compressor. And um, while you're installing it, you may even have to uh, pull down on your belt tensioner, pull up on your um, serpentine belt, and then connect it before it's locked into place. Okay, now that we have our uh, AC compressor sitting here, um, our electrical lines are connected. And before we install this, I'm going to take, and uh, it's going to take me, to, I have to use two hands to do it, but a 19 millimeter um, will also work really well to get on here for the uh, belt tensioner. It hits perfectly on there and then you can um, push down on it and get your serpentine belt up over it. But you're going to have to use two hands so I'm going to have to shut this off and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so there we go. Everything is Put back together, it's all installed. Serpentine belts perfectly uh, routed. So now what we need to do is reinstall your battery box, put your battery in, reconnect your, uh, your positive and negative lines, and then we can go ahead and put your air box back in, um, your engine cowling. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and bleed uh, the air out of the system. I'll show you that in just a second. All right, so we put our battery box back in, our battery is in and connected. Um, we put in our air cleaner, we connected our cold air intake, so that's all done. And uh, made sure that our line is, um, there's a little groove that your intake is connected to. You make sure that this slides into place right down there. And that has to lock into place. And the other thing is, do not forget to hook up your mass airflow sensor. Yeah, I mean, you'll get engine codes, engine lights. Um, so make sure that you hear that click. Make sure it's in place. Pull on it, and it should be locked down. 
And now we've got our uh, engine cover on. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and top the fluid level off um, up to the top mark, if you can see it right there. So we're going to go up to the top mark with the ATF fluid. Okay, so you do not need to remove that um, the line that's on top of the power steering pump. Uh, that's your rack and pinion uh, supply line, and you do not need to remove that. Um, I did it to move the pump out of the way a little bit better, plus I replaced the pump. Um, you can shift the thing out of the way far enough to get the water pump out. Um, once you disconnect that, you do have to bleed the system. It's, uh, it's kind of a pain to do, but um, I'll, let me show you how to do it really quick. Uh, but anyways, uh, if you do disconnect that line and once you reconnect it, you're going to have to put in uh, your either ATF fluid or your power steering fluid depends on the manufacturer's specifications. So here's how you bleed it. So then what you'll do is, and the easiest way to do it is jack up the front end of your car. So elevate the front end of your vehicle and uh, get in your vehicle, start the thing up. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate, rotate the wheel back and forth and keep on going and just keep, keep doing it until that noise, uh, the actual, um, the air, basically the air is out of the system. So you just wanna keep rotating that back and forth, back and forth um, and do it till it bottoms out. So go all the way over until it stops and then go back over again until it stops and just keep doing that. Um, and then it works the air back out of the system. Thank you for watching Alley 55 Customs. Uh, please hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, we do a ton of videos on a weekly basis, plus we uh, do some giveaways. And uh, thank you for watching.